Warren County Sheriff Martin Edwards. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning. How are you, sir? Pretty good. How about you? Good. Good. It's uh, still going to be pretty breezy today, really windy, and just got to be careful if anybody's outdoors working. Yes, but uh, you know, it still felt good this morning, even in the dark, uh, with, the, with that warm wind blowing. It's very enjoyable. Uh, yesterday, the wind really pushed, too. It did. Actually, there was a few power outages. Uh, there was outages uh, around Henderson County here in Warren County. Uh, power went off two, three minutes, and a lot of it was due to wind or, or tree damage uh, with these winds. Yep, and uh, just as a reminder, bad time to be burning outside right now. Yeah. Uh, there was a field fire yesterday over by Cameron. Uh, they, they must have got it out pretty quickly because I good. didn't hear for, for additional units to be called. So okay. I, I guess the good news is is the crop is just about out, so if it does burn, it'll be pretty low to the ground. But still, uh, again, not a good time to be burning. Okay, and uh, people need to realize that today is 80, tomorrow's Halloween, but it's going to be chilly tomorrow night, about normal this time of year, the 50s, and then slowly start to cool off with a low of 34. But trick-or-treating is tomorrow night. It's already there. It trick-or-treating is. is just here now. Uh, good time to bring up, um, please slow down, people, uh, when the little ones are out there. I think most trick-or-treating is between like 5.30 and 7.30, give or take. Uh, I've always had concerns about Roseville and uh, Little York because there's state highways running through both towns, so uh, rest assured we're going to be very, very strictly enforcing the speed limit uh, through both those towns because uh, that seems to be where most of the kids congregate. So uh, just take a minute, be watchful, and uh, I'm sure uh, people that are escorting the little kids will probably have some flashlights or something, but just remember, those kids are wearing masks. They don't see very well. They're excited. They might run out in the street, so... Uh, slow down. Just slow down. You got it. And a reminder that there's lots of events going on that are nice and safe uh, right here in town and also in Galesburg. But we have the trunk retreat at the pool, the outdoor pool with, I think that's First Christian Church, also at the Monmouth Fire Department. And uh, Chief Schweitzer talked about that yesterday. He'll be on hand. They're having candy and hot dogs. And uh, that'll be a good place to be. And uh, there's some other ones uh, throughout the area also. Monmouth College has it up and down uh, Broadway and 9th. They'll be having a trick-or-treat uh, locations. So there's a lot uh, lot going on. You can check our events page on our website to find more. Oh, I hope everybody has fun. You handing out candy in Alexis? No, I'll probably be sitting in Roseville again. I've, I've done that for good grief most of my career. I've been down there. Working down there? On, on Halloween. So. Okay, well, you take some candy with you then. Uh, I have, and then nobody ever comes up to the car, and then the minute I don't, they do. <laughs> um, I think one of the sweetest things I ever had happen was uh, Dad walked up with his daughter, and she wanted to give me you know, a piece of candy, which oh, it was just heartbreaking. You know, uh -huh. It was heartwarming, I should say. It was just so darn cute. So I bet. Well, everybody who uh, sees Sheriff Edwards in Roseville, Go up to his car and yeah, get that's right. Candy. The candy's coming into my window, not out. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> he, he would like a little candy, yeah. Well, thanks for working on Halloween evening. Sure. Okay, let's get a jail project update. Uh, things are moving along quite well. Um, we are at the point now we're going to really start tweaking the plans. Um, there's there's a lot to think about as far as the, uh, uh, the IT stuff, like where we're going to place phones and computers and cameras and uh, so I've, I've been talking to Kenny Helms a little bit about that, uh, since he gives us IT support. Uh, the other thing that Chip and I have, Chip Auger and I have talked about is we've made a couple trips up to Lee County to look at their jail, uh, since our new jails will be heavily patterned after what they have, uh, to, uh, kind of see how they're working their operation and, and but very importantly, uh, ask what do you wish you had done when you plan this? Because uh, on one of our last trips, they talked about the size of the window to the the uh, padded cell area, how they wish they'd reconfigured that differently. So uh, benchmark off of others uh, and, and incorporate that into the planning process. So uh, I think it behooves us to do that, and the sheriff's office up there has always been very accommodating. So uh, if we do break ground next spring, there's just an awful lot of things we better have in place because as they build, they still got a factory where they're going to do drops for all this, this equipment. So um, it, it's going to be a little bit intense, but if we take a little at a time and work off our plans, we'll be okay. 
So what are the biggest um, aspects of this jail? And you talked about the the padded sale room and things like that. What what are like the big, biggest aspects? If you if you saw someone on the street and they said, "What's the new jail going to be like?" What would you tell them? Uh, it's going to be like a modern jail. Uh, that that's rather succinct, but it's true. Uh, it's it's going to give us a, 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 a lot more flexibility than we have right now. Uh, there, there's uh, segregation requirements uh, based on the status of the, of the inmate, uh, felons and, and uh, misdemeanants, uh, sentenced, unsentenced, uh, naturally separate the sexes. So um, it, it's, first of all, we'll be able to bring the, the women back to the jail. We, we're still uh, outsourcing them to Knox County. Uh, so it'll be nice to be saving that $55 per inmate per day. Um, but, but again, it, it, it'll give us a lot more flexibility to, to manage our population. Uh, I, I think it's, it'll be better for the inmates. I, I think it's going to quell some of the problems we run into. You, you get a little bit stir crazy, frankly, in a, in a small space that we have now. Um, but again, it's, it's just a management issue. I think it's going to be better for our staffing. Uh, to give them a, a better work area, certainly. Um, and then in the office itself, there's there's a lot of things that ought to be better where we're at right now, such as interview rooms. We, we don't have a designated interview room. We just don't have the space for it. Uh, so that's going to help us quite a bit. Um, uh, the, the public being able to access the building is going to be a little bit better, I believe. So uh, just all around, it's, it's the right time and you got to keep going back to the fact that where we're at right now, it's it's just so outlived its life. No matter what you do, you got to get out of that building. So okay, uh, it, it's it's just the right time to be moving ahead. Any idea what we'll do with the property or that building once the jail is built? I can't say for certain, but I, uh, the, the the smartest thing to do, in my opinion, would be to demolish the building uh, and create parking behind the courthouse. Uh, there's certainly no sense in letting that building just sit there. Um, so I, I, I know that's been talked about. Now, how far those talks have gone, I can't tell you. That's ultimately not my decision, but that would certainly be my recommendation. Uh, I know that there's, there's, frankly, it gets crowded around behind the patent block, and I know the city's got some designs on what they want to do with that annex. Uh, so parking is always going to be at a premium in that area. Okay. All right, so anything else about the jail project update that you want to share this morning? No, I think that about covers it. Uh, again, we, we continue to work it and uh, stay in contact with the design builders, and, and uh, so, so we, don't, we don't have any glitches. Let's just keep moving along steadily but surely and, uh, and, and be ready to go when the shovels hit the dirt. And you're still housing Henderson County inmates at the moment? <clears throat> yes, we are. Okay, and we still up in population? It continues to creep. Okay. We were at 18 a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah. Uh, but that included people that we had scattered out all over the place, too, including uh, ankle monitors and, and what we had in Knox County. So uh, this morning, I believe we had 13 in-house. Okay. So uh, it's staying steady. Okay. Uh, how are you doing staffing-wise? We, are, we have all of our authorized uh, staffing right now for the jail. Uh, again, newer people, they all have to go to school. Uh, but we're staying steady on on the jail right now on patrol. I'm hurting, frankly. Uh, I've I've uh, had one off uh, on an injury for several months, and over the last few months, I've lost four more deputies. Two uh, decided they didn't want to be deputies anymore, and two went to other counties. So uh, it hurts. Now we've got uh, somebody in the pipeline for school to send, so that's going to help. We get the one that was injured back. That's going to help. Uh, but we're still looking, and, and everybody wants laterals. Everybody wants laterals, so you don't have to spend the time and the money to train them because you've got a very long academy out there, several months. Uh, so laterals are at a premium right now, but they're always going to gravitate towards the better-paying uh, departments. And, of course, the state police have been pulling <laughs> – they've been, they've been pulling officers off of everybody. Yeah, I, I saw them again this morning advertising ninety thousand yeah. dollars a year. They had a view of uh, uh, Lakeshore Drive and and Lake Michigan, and and that just made it look pretty there in Chicago. Well, it, it's hard to turn down, you know, that kind of money in a much bigger organization, and sure, uh, you know, the better equipment and things that come along with it. So I, I can't blame the younger people for wanting to make, you know, career progression. 
uh, but but it just makes it tough for smaller agencies, and it's just it's just a little bit cutthroat, frankly. It sounds like it. Uh, so you you steal for you don't like to do it, but you steal from other agencies. Uh, we we had a young man we were going to bring in, but at the last second he's decided maybe he's going to try it another place because it's got better pay. So it it's a commodity right now. I guess it is sellable. Yeah. Good luck to you and. It's a challenge for sure, but maybe with the progression uh, progression of the new law enforcement center, you can be much more competitive as far as what, what it looks like. It is certainly going to create a much more professional environment to work out of. Okay. Update on crime calls. calls uh, uh, Police Chief Joe Schweitzer said yesterday calls are up. No particular reason for that, but dispatch calls are up. It, it tends to be some of the same stuff, just more of it. Uh, there's there's always seems to be some turmoil in a household somewhere or uh, suicidal ideations that we respond to. Um, this morning we already had a call in the city and one in the county about that, then another medical issue in the county. This is all before 7 o'clock this morning. So, uh, and, of course, the, there's always the thefts that take place and the burglaries. I, I know that statewide or maybe nationwide they're trying to tout this drop in crime but it it may or may not be the higher level stuff you know like homicides but the lower end stuff like the burglaries and the thefts and the domestic batteries and things along those lines and i don't seek to minimize them they are serious crimes but if you were to cut the line between the two of them those are still up so um there, there's still a lot of responses to do out there okay well good luck uh, and speaking of which, I, I know the city would certainly like to attract some more dispatchers. Yes. Uh, I, and I understand that, and, and they've got a huge job uh, and additional training that they're having to undertake right now. Uh, so if you have an interest, there is openings out there, certainly in, in the uh, correctional areas and the uh, dispatching area. Uh, I certainly encourage people to, to uh, look into those jobs. They can be stepping stones uh, in some cases, like, I try to promote out of the jail as much as I can, um, and we've done it several times. So uh, it's just an opportunity to uh, get started on it and learn a lot of good information uh, in either one of those uh, job descriptions. Okay. And uh, anything else before we get to our final topic of discussion this morning from the sheriff's office? I'm going to throw off that hat and put another one on briefly. Sure. Legion. Yes. The Soup Supper is Monday. Yes, we had and, Sherry recently, and she uh, <laughs> she does such a good job with cooking. All of them do. Yeah, uh, I can't wait. Uh, the next one is uh, will be this coming Monday. This Monday, okay. And uh, the uh, Veterans Day program will be on the eleventh, starting at ten o'clock uh, at the American Legion. So we invite the public to be there. We do. The band will start. Mammoth College Band will kick things off at quarter till ten. And we have uh, quite a few different readings, and Tom Best will be speaking as well. What's Tom talking about? I, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Uh, I think it'll be some type of a historical perspective, but I, I honestly, I never know what the content is of the speaker. Uh, we, we just get the speaker, and, and you know they, they have their topic to talk about. So Sounds good to me. We'll be there. We'll be broadcasting live as usual. Yes. Okay. Sheriff, it's all yours, buddy. Are you trying to ask me a particular question? Uh, yeah, well, I think you've had half the town already announced that you're retiring, so we thought we'd give you a chance to actually talk about your retirement. Well, I this would be the first that I've actually said anything publicly about it, and I haven't tried to hide it. Uh, everybody around me, certainly at, at the job or people I know, know that I am very likely on my very last term. But that doesn't end until November 26th, so... Uh, I'm not running out the door that fast. I, at this point, I have every intention to finish uh, the term. Uh, and the jail project is, is going to be in full swing at that point. So I guess that would be a little bit of a gift to my successor that it will be a pretty much a turnkey operation uh, unless there's something that happens between now and then. So uh, a lot of work to do between now and then. But uh, it's time, you know. I mean, age creeps up to everybody. And uh, my wife is going to retire from her job next year and now i gotta hurry up and catch up with her <laughs> how many years have you been the sheriff of warren county 19 last august 
Wow. So it'll be a total of 21 by the time November 26 comes around. Okay. And like I said, at this point, I have every intention to, you know, to finish the term. Uh, and of course, it'll be, the primary will be in November of 26. And, you know, the, the candidates surely will be out well before that. It seems like the election season always seems to kick off at the Prime Beef Festival. So. Sure. Uh, but for one time in my life, I can just sit back and watch the thing instead of being involved in it. So uh, it be interesting. Yeah, it will be. And we'll talk over the next, you know, year and a half, two years um, into 26 about your career. And and uh, there's going to be a lot to uh, to reflect on and and a lot of it good. Yeah. Yeah. There's always the good, the bad, the ugly. Sure. So uh, we, we can get all that out. Well, congratulations on 19 years thus far. Well, I appreciate it. It's, uh, and I don't say this to tout myself, but nobody has ever gone beyond three terms in that office. Really? Yeah. What's your secret? I don't know, but obstinance, I suppose. <laughs> well, so. at least uh, you've got a major project to undertake with the new jail project. And like you said, your successor will have a chance to, to be in a brand new facility. Yep. Unless something changes and we don't know it no i'm pretty darn sure we're going to be out there it, it is in the works it's moving forward so we'll okay be there. thank you so much for coming in this morning i appreciate it one last shout out yeah uh 45 years sunday for me and the missus congratulations Thanks. happy anniversary yeah it just shows how obstinate she is too that's right 45 <laughs> years where'd you guys get married at my not north dakota no joke yeah my not north dakota yep i was in the service and wow uh, found a local gal and took her away from him. So I just I have to crack up at your wife. One day, I'm calling you. I think it was about the last year's Legion um, Veterans Day thing. Well, you left your phone at home. Mm -hmm. Your wife answered it because she saw my name. We just had a, a grand old time talking. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's, she's pretty outgoing. I'm telling you. That's awesome. Happy 45 years. Well, thank you. Have a great day, Sheriff. Appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Warren County Sheriff Martin Edwards.